Hi guys, uh, welcome to section B um, of the exam walkthrough. The way in which I thought I'd go about this is actually to break it down question by question, so a total of 12 videos. But the way in which I've actually constructed this is to give the answer first. So I've actually gone through and completed the entire exam or this part of the exam. And so the, you can clearly see the answers for this particular question are already up. But the point I want to make here and how I'm doing this is I just want you to see how I deconstruct the question or how I actually recommend you to deconstruct the, the question and then go on to actually give the assessor exactly what they want. I think the big thing about biology, especially with section B, is the context. The context that they give to questions and the concepts that you need to extract from that context, that is the most difficult part about examinations full stop, but more so about biology. And this is the big thing. So going through and deconstructing the particular question and then giving the answer in a really clear and concise manner. Now, enough of that sort of ramble of an introduction. What I want to do now is I'll start with question one. Um, so question one looks at this. CTP is a substance used by cells to make RNA. The cell initially synthesizes CTP using a metabolic pathway. So it's using a metabolic pathway, starting with the amino acid aspartame and another complex molecule B. The pathway for making CTP is represented below. The enzyme involved in the first step of the pathway is ATCKs, if you will. And therefore, this is our enzyme. Now, rolling through it, I just want to actually get a brief overview of what the process is. We clearly see A and B join, they actually produce D, but enzyme here, ATK, catalyzes that. Enzyme X then pushes D to go to an intermediate, which they haven't shown, which then goes enzyme Y to N and enzyme Z to CTP. So it's an enzymatic pathway with different products and substrates throughout. So looking at question A, what is the role of ATKs? Explain how it performs this role. Now, I think when students see this, and we just have a look at the number of lines that are given, there's about seven lines given. And so students will see that and think, okay, I've got to provide so much detail, but it's only two marks. And two marks mean essentially two key points. If it's a comparison question, it's a comparative, a comparative statement. So essentially we just break this up into the two sections. It's looking for what role ATK is planes and how it performs that role. And so when you actually look at this, what does it do? A and B join together and it produces D. We know enzymes are biological catalysts. They lower the activation energy, thereby increasing the rate of reaction. And so what it actually does, it does, it helps produce D by catalyzing the reaction that joins A and B. That's exactly what it does. How does it do that? It lowers the activation energy. And so therefore, if you look at my answer, there are only two key dot points. One dot point addressing the what, and I obviously will repeat this, but it says it produces D by catalyzing the reaction that joins A and B, those two substrates to produce the product of D. How does it do it? it simply lowers the activation energy of the reaction. There's no need to delve into enzyme kinetics or anything like that, anything too specific. You've given them exactly what you want, what, sorry, what they want, and in two lines, and you've saved yourself the time. So moving forward from A, I just wanna go down into the next one, which is B. So now we're moving into B, part I and II. Um, and essentially we see this graph. So the graph below shows the change in the rate of production of D in solutions with different concentrations of CTP, keeping all other variables constant. So we look at the rate of production here and the concentration of CTP. I haven't even looked at the stem of the question and I clearly see that is there is a negative relationship between these two variables. As the concentration of CTP increases, the rate of production of D decreases. So I says, using the information in the graph state, what is happening to the rate of production of D as the concentration of CTP increases. So again, it's just a graphical interpretation. And essentially we see the rate of, rate of production of D decreases as the concentration of CTP increases. So a very simple statement, the rate of production D decreases. In the examination report, that is what they give. I've just put in brackets as the concentration of CTP increases just to for completion. Perfect. Now moving into part II, um, and I just want to flag with you here that only 11% of the state got three out of three marks. And what that shows is that a lot of students will give really long, long, 
long responses, but they'll actually um, open themselves up to contradictions that they make with the detail they think they're giving. So remember, we want to give a logical, clear and concise answer. Just allow the assessor to see your logic. I think that's the big thing. So what does it say? CTP changes the quaternary structure of the enzyme ATKs or ATCAs, if you will. Um, use this information to explain at the molecular level how the production of CTP is regulated within a cell. Now, the big thing here is, and then you ought to note that the quaternary structure is actually changed. And if the quaternary structure is being changed, it means we've got some form of inhibition that's occurring. So the big thing that CTP would do is it'd actually be an inhibitor. And if it's doing so, it's not actually having direct competition. So it's not a competitive inhibitor. I'd be thinking it's a non-competitive inhibitor. But the big thing here is if it decreases the, um, the activity of that particular enzyme, it means something's happening to the active site. And we know when the active site changes its shape, the substrates can no longer bind to the active site and therefore cannot catalyze the reaction we began at the start, which was A plus B going to D. So the logic that I've actually stepped, stepped out here is as follows. First and foremost, we want to state what CTP is acting as. And CTP is acting as an inhibitor. I put in brackets non-competitive by binding to ATKs. What is the consequence of that? Okay, If it's an inhibitor, it actually alters the shape of the active site. And so I've gone to say the shape of the active site is altered. If the shape of the active site is altered, that means the substrates A and D, well, that's meant to be A and B, can no longer bind to the active site. Let's just uh, make that different. A and B can no longer bind to the active site to produce D. And so what is actually happening here, it's a self-regulated system because we know if we scroll all the way back up, that CTP is the product. So if that increases, that means that this decreases in activity. So if I go through to the bottom here, it's basically saying that just to bring it all together, that as the final product CTP increases, the first step of that pathway decreases just due to the decreased activity of ATCAs. Therefore, that regulates the reaction itself. And so three marks, I've given four clear dot points, but still the, the premise still remains. I've tried to be as clear and concise as possible, but I feel like that this is a logical progression, a log logical answer, and you're more likely to get the mark in this process.